Hello, I'm Steve Mann and welcome to Paper Classroom. In this tutorial, science tutorial, we're going to be talking about hydrogen bonding, one of the four different bonding types that there are. So just a quick reminder, you, there is ionic bonding, there's covalent bonding, which is the strongest of all the bonds, and we've already talked about covalent bonding. Hydrogen bonding is the weakest of all the bondings, but it's by far the most important to paper makers, as we will see later. And there is metallic bonding, but we're not going to bother talking about metallic bonding. The classic way of illustrating hydrogen bonding is using the water molecule. Now, water only has uh, an atomic mass of 18. 16 from the oxygen, one each from two hydrogens, 18. So really, with an atomic mass of 18, water should really be a gas. And the only reason it isn't a gas, the reason why it's a liquid, is because water believes it's actually a lot bigger than it really is. And uh, we'll see that when we illustrate hydrogen bonding. So, here we have two standard hydrogen atoms, hydrogen, atomic number one, one proton, one electron in the K shell. Oxygen, atomic number eight, eight, eight protons and therefore eight electrons. And here are our eight electrons two electrons in the first shell, which is maximum six electrons in the outer shell. And it would love to have eight. Hydrogen would love to have two. Oxygen would love to have eight. So this is what happens. The hydrogens come near the oxygen and then they share these electrons. Remember we did this when we talked about covalent bonding. So the bonding in water is a covalent bond. So for one moment, this hydrogen has two electrons. So that's a full shell, it's very happy. This hydrogen has two electrons, it's a full shell, it's very happy. Next moment, well, you, you know the story, the uh, pink electrons from the oxygen will move out a little bit. These blue ones will take this place and so oxygen will then have the full shell. And if you want any reminder of that, then just go back and look at the uh, tutorial that we did on covalent bonding. For the moment we're talking about hydrogen bonding, but I just want to show you what's happening to all the electrons. Because you've got these electrons here now, these other electrons are pushed back a little bit and they sit at the back of the oxygen molecule as a pair or two pairs of electrons. So these electrons tend to stay in this area away from the hydrogen atoms. <clears throat> because you've got this big concentration of electrons now, this end of the molecule is slightly negative compared to this end of the molecule where you don't have so many electrons. So that's slightly negative compared to this, therefore this is slightly positive compared to that. And this is where the hydrogen bonding comes from. It becomes almost a little magnet with a positive end and a negative end, or a north pole and a south pole. So for a moment what we'll just do, just to make life a bit simpler, if we colour in these atoms, get rid of the backgrounds. So we've still got a water molecule. This is now your oxygen. These are the two hydrogens. This is slightly negative at this end. These two are slightly positive with respect to the other end of the molecule. And then if we make it a little bit smaller, and then we give it a few friends, Now remember, all of these water molecules are now like little magnets. They've got positive ends and they've got negative ends. 
So what's going to happen? The positive bits of one molecule are going to be attracted to the negative bits of another molecule. Does that make sense? Okay, so here we go. There's two of them. So now this negative oxygen is attracted to that slightly more positive hydrogen. This negative oxygen is attracted to that slightly more positive hydrogen. Same again here. This negative oxygen is attracted to the positive hydrogen. This negative oxygen, positive hydrogen. And then the last two. So you've got this bond here and here. And you've got that bond there and there. So now all these water molecules are loosely associated with each other by hydrogen bonding. And so they all think they are one giant molecule. So water no longer thinks it's just three atoms that weigh 18 atomic units. In this particular illustration, two, four, six, we've got seven water molecules. That makes it heavier, and that's why the boiling point is so high, that's why it's not a gas. So I hope that makes sense, how hydrogen bonding works. Just to show you the importance in paper making, we'll look at fibres and hydrogen bonding. Why is hydrogen bonding so important to fibres? Well, when we get onto the fibre section, we'll learn that fibres are ultimately made from cellulose. And cellulose is bristling with hydroxyl groups. This OH group here is what we call a hydroxyl group. So there are tens of thousands of them, if not millions, on the surfaces of each fibre. So I'm illustrating just one. So this represents the fibre. Here is one of the millions of hydroxyl groups. Here is another fibre, and there's one of its millions of hydroxyl groups. Just like water, water remember is OHH, this is very similar, OH fibre. So this oxygen is slightly negative compared to the hydrogen. This oxygen is slightly negative compared to that hydrogen. So what's going to happen is this oxygen being slightly negative is attracted to that positive hydrogen and this oxygen here being slightly negative is attracted to that one and that will bring them together and this is the only force the only bond that holds fibers together it's entirely due to hydrogen bonding and the paper maker's job we can't make hydrogen bonds because we can't make or we can't make uh, hydroxyl groups but we can make or help to make hydrogen bonds. The papermaker's job is to expose as many of these hydroxyl groups as we possibly can on the surface of a fibre and then bring them close together so that they can see each other. And then once they get close enough together, then this hydrogen bonding effect will take place. And that's the thing that holds all your fibres together. In a sheet of paper. So I hope all that makes sense to you. Watch it again if it doesn't. Have a look at the uh, covalent bonding video if it helps. And thank you for watching this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Please enjoy our other videos and I look forward to hearing your feedback.